Hi and welcome to this week's web design video blog. This week we've screencast a tutorial for installing and using FontAwesome 3.0 on your website. Keep watching too because we've also got a mini follow-up tutorial for how to use FontAwesome icons when design prototyping in software like Photoshop, Illustrator and Fireworks. I've mentioned web icon fonts in a few uh, blogs and video blogs over the past couple of months as they've really took off in 2012 and look set to become standard practice in 2013 due to their advantages, particularly with responsive and retina design. If you're new to icon fonts and haven't seen our previous video titled Why Web Icon Fonts Are Brilliant, we definitely recommend watching it. We've linked it up from the supporting blog post. Right, so here's part one, how to install and use font awesome icons on your website. So let's start off then by downloading the latest version of FontAwesome directly from their page on GitHub. The zip folder contains everything that we need to have FontAwesome running on our page, both locally and online. Okay, so let's grab that and I'll just put that on the desktop. So I've got a little example web page that we'll use here on my desktop, but we'll come to that in a moment. Let's just take a look inside the font awesome folder and see what files we have. So if you're using a more advanced CSS technique like SAS or less, the folders and files are in there and the instructions can be found directly on the font awesome web page. We're just going to use the basic traditional method to embed font awesome uh, using CSS. So the first folder then that we're going to need is the font folder. If you're already familiar with using uh, app font face and sort of web fonts, you're going to be familiar with these font formats inside. So before you move on, uh, I definitely recommend installing the font awesome OTF typeface. We'll be using this later on for our prototyping in Photoshop um, in the example. So if you're on a Mac, double click that and install that. It will become useful later on. So we'll need the whole font folder in a moment. A little bit of documentation inside there if you want to check out the font awesome uh, web page offline obviously you don't need that and then we have our CSS folder which contains the files that we're going to need so first of all take a look at font hyphen awesome.css this is just the normal CSS you need that's laid out in a format that you can use to see and edit it then you've got font awesome.min.css once you've finished uh, the sort of development phase of installing Font Awesome, I'd obviously def uh, definitely recommend using the minified version. It's about 33% smaller compressed. If you're also supporting IE7, i.e. you want Font Awesome to work on IE7, then you'll also need to use the IE7 fallback. Check out our supporting post for the code that you need to wrap around and embed that file. So let's just move that over slightly. Here's our local example page that we're going to use for the tutorial. Very, very simple so that we can see the code we need for Font Awesome. So we're just going to add a few uh, icons in line to the text on here. So there's that HTML page we just took a look at. I've got a CSS folder that contains the style sheet within. So the first file we're going to need then is fontawesome.css. Obviously, eventually we want to use the minified version, but for the sake of the tutorial, let's just use the normal CSS file. And like I mentioned, we want the entire font folder. So let's copy that across as well. So they're the only files that we need. I'm going to open up the project in Sublime Text 2. There's the uh, example page you can see there. Very simple. You can see the link to our one single style sheet. And there's our two style sheets just there. So the first thing we want to do then is to link up our second style sheet. It's worth noting, if you prefer, you can open fontawesome.css and copy and paste all of the code onto your existing style sheet, perhaps uh, add it down at the bottom somewhere if you just prefer a single, uh, a single style sheet. So I'm going to keep them separate for now and, and I'm just going to link that up like so. So that's going to collect our font awesome style sheet. Now, it's very important uh, that you have the correct file paths set up for your file structure. So I've automatically already put the font awesome style sheet inside my CSS folder, similar to the format that font awesome have when you download the file. So they're sat side by side in there. 
and then I've added the font folder to the root directory of my website. You can obviously put these files wherever you like, you just need to make sure that the style sheet can reference and access the correct path to those typefaces. Everything else thereafter, you don't necessarily need to touch or edit. You'll see if you scroll further down, once you start getting into the references for each individual icon. But we don't need to do anything on there. The main thing to do is just to make sure that your paths are correct for your style sheet, so the file should be accessed correctly when embedded in the head of your template for the pages that you wish to use Font Awesome. And you need to make sure that the paths to the fonts for the app font face are correctly sourced. So let's save that and let's start off then by embedding an icon. So we simply use the i tag and to reference an icon, we're going to use the class. We all begin with icon and let's use the Twitter one, Ooh, for example. And then we'll close the i tag. So you don't have to put anything inside, just simply an empty i tag with the class referencing the icon that you wish to use and I'll show you the best way to reference those in a moment. Let's refresh our page and see if that's added the Twitter icon. Okay, great, there we go. So like I mentioned, if you go back to the Font Awesome website, there's a bit of a tucked away page that I find really helpful for finding which icons I'd like to use. Head down to the design of friendly area just here and visit the copy and paste page. This is a nice little page to bookmark, like I've bookmarked here. We can reference all of the icons available. So let's say we want to get this little uh, icon OK circle. Head back over to Sublime. Let's pop another one in. So I class equals. And it's quite literally as simple as that. You can simply treat the icons like any other typeface. They can be styled. There's the icon just there. It can be styled and edited through CSS like any other typeface. If you use software like Creative Suite to prototype your designs, there's a really nifty method for using font awesome icons as James now shows in part two. So let's try adding a font awesome Twitter icon into this uh, Photoshop file that I've just created here. Now, quite important, you may remember earlier when we downloaded Font Awesome, we installed the Font Awesome OTF typeface, which we're going to use. So let's head over to the really helpful copy and paste Font Awesome page again. I'm just going to zoom in a little and let's just uh, search for the Twitter icons. You can see there, there's a choice of two. Let's just zoom in a bit. Now, what we can do is actually highlight the icon itself by clicking and dragging it. And I'm going to copy this to the clipboard by pushing Command and C. And we can literally paste that icon into Photoshop, providing we have the Font Awesome typeface selected. So I'm just going to click there and paste. And then you can uh, work with this icon in the same way you can with typefaces, and it scales like a vector icon as well so you have full control to use the icons in any of your prototyping work. So that's it, pretty simple and fast becoming a staple technique of front-end developers the world over. Font Awesome gives designers the flexibility to use a large, high quality open source library of icons that can be styled and animated with CSS and scale perfectly on responsive and retina friendly layouts. Thanks for watching our tutorials. We hope they get you up and running with Font Awesome without too much trouble. As always, if you have any questions, comments, or problems installing Font Awesome, please leave them in the comments on our supporting blog post.